I'll, I'll go through this uh, thing with a couple of slides first in a couple, just a couple of minutes, and then I, I uh, go to the, the demo. Building Microsoft Teams apps with Blazor. First, a few things about what is Blazor. Well, that is uh, a framework for single page applications, and it is uh, these days, uh, it is a part of ASP.NET Core, so it is kind of central central part of ASP.NET Core. Uh, it uses Razor syntax and, and Razor components to, to build UI. It doesn't need any kind of plugins. It works on just on web standards and works with any modern browser without any additions or any plugins required, oh, and also mobile browsers. Um, the thing with Blazor is that you write your UI code or your code you write in C sharp instead of JavaScript or well you could probably use any .NET language but you don't write it in JavaScript you use C sharp and what that brings also which is quite interesting is that you can actually then use any uh, .NET or more or less any .NET standard library in in your application so for instance uh, Microsoft Graph uh, client and uh, Azure Cosmos DB SDK and stuff like that and and what makes it different from well react and angular and Vue and and these kinds of, of frameworks is that well what I think is just it's not just another JavaScript framework it is uh, thinking uh, well if you would out of the box outside of the box uh, uh, a bit so doing things uh, a bit differently there are two flavors of blazor or actually hosting models uh, so you have blazor server which has an asp.net core backend and all of your code runs on the server and the changes in the ui or the, the ui is rendered on the server and the changes in the ui is sent to the client over a signal r connection and then uh, the, the the client bits of, of Blazor will then take care of uh, updating the UI. And then you have something that is called Blazor WebAssembly, which has no backend and is uh, actually is all of your application is running in the client. Uh, and you can host such an application on any web server that is capable of hosting static HTML files. So for instance, Azure Storage or Azure, uh, Azure Static Websites and GitHub Pages and, and whatnot. And how it works is that it is a, a mono-based .NET runtime that is loaded into the browser and running actually inside of the browser. And that then loads all of your DLLs uh, or your application DLLs into that runtime and then it runs in the browser just like in, in, in a sandbox where you, your JavaScript is running. Uh, so you can't get to the local file system or, or do stuff that you, you, you can't otherwise do in, in a browser application. And if you do HTTP requests, you will have to comply to course rules and, and stuff like that. So it is running in a sandbox, but still it is your .NET code running uh, in the browser. So then building Teams apps with Blazor, there are a few challenges or one major what I think actually is that um, since you the your Blazor application, you are writing it in, in C Sharp or .NET language, and Teams SDK is, uh, well, JavaScript only SDK. So you have to do some interop there. And JavaScript interop in Blazor, well, it is quite easy, but it, it can also be quite tricky. Uh, and especially with if you have a, a lot of callbacks and promises and stuff like that in, in the JavaScript uh, code, then, then it becomes really tricky. Another thing that in, in Teams applications, which applies to all kinds of Teams applications, is that Teams does not actually do the authentication of, of your user. It provides you with information about who the user is. It is not authentication, so you have to take care of the authentication properly. So uh, it, there's a lot of boilerplate code that you have to write to get things just to, to get things set up. and. And uh, that's what I set out on during the Christmas holidays to, to do something about that. And I wrote a, a component library that takes care of most of this boilerplate code. So writing Teams apps with Blazor becomes really easy. 
And I have a, a demo where I'll, I'll show you how to write a simple personal tab application. That is those applications that you get in the on the left hand side in the apps bar. But then writing channel applications or meeting applications, it's just it's just the same same principles that you follow. It's a bit different, but still uh, pretty much the same from an application perspective. Um, then there's a couple of links here on the last slide. I already sent this uh, slide deck to to Vesa, so you'll be be getting this uh, th these links as well. And so now I will start the demo. Actually, um, I have created a, a blog article on my blog, which is actually the the script for this demo. So and, and this link to or the link to this article is in the in the slide deck. So you can follow this script as well and do the same what I'm showing you now in 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 this demo. And I'll be copy pasting the code from that script. So we'll start off with creating a new laser application and then let's call it that is something that i haven't yet been have done i've practiced this a couple of times so we'll do a blazer server application using dotnet 5 and just a standard configuration with http and then let's create that all right, so now we have the, the the Blazor application created. So the first thing that I'm, I'm going to do is that I will register the application in Azure AD. I have already registered this here in, in Azure AD, but I'll just go through the, the registration in, in, in general. So this is just a standard Azure AD application registration, where if we look at the authentication, uh, I'm using the single page application platform with specifying the root URL to the to the application which I'll be running locally in 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 Visual Studio there's nothing special to this there's just a, a standard single tenant application and and so just a normal application registration the API permissions I've granted with or used admin consent so that the users don't have to consent to to this permission, delegated permissions separately. So it's just a bit easier for them. But otherwise, this is just a standard application. Next thing what I'm going to do is then uh, I will we'll configure that information uh, in my application uh, settings file. I'll just copy this from the blog post and then type in the in write information and I need to copy the app the client ID because that I don't know from top of my head like that. And then I'll, uh, I will add a reference to the library. It is available in Nougat. It's called Blazor Raid Teams. And it's also available open source on GitHub. And so I'll install that. Now it's installed. And then I can close this up. I'll save that. Close. And then I'll take the imports file and do some additions to that one so that we get easier it was easier to reference the components close that up the next thing what i'll be doing is that i'll do the configuration this is just as you you, you know this is just standard configuration that you do in asp.net core application so i'll copy that and add the the configuration here so uh, now i'm using the from my application settings the Teams app section and uh, client ID and tenant ID, and just uh, letting the Blazor Raid Teams know that this is the stuff that that it can use to actually do the authentication of of the user. Then I will create one page 
in the application. And this is the, the personal tab page that or the, the page that represents uh, the, the personal tab app. And just call it personal like that. And then I will copy the code that I have on the blog here. OK, now, now I'll just explain a few bits here. Uh, so here is the, the well the normal routing that that is uh, used in in Blazor applications. But then this Teams application component is is part of of Blazor 8 Teams that actually does a lot of stuff for you. So it takes care of all of the communications with the, the Teams SDK. So that means uh, initializing the application and letting Teams SDK know that your application has loaded successfully and, and getting the context for the application and, and all kinds of stuff. And also, since I have specified that this application requires authentication, it will also do the authentication using Microsoft Authentication Library. What it will be then doing is uh, provide me with the access token that I can then use for the permissions that that I, I uh, granted access to in in the in the application registration. So with that access token, I could then read uh, the profile information for the user who has logged in. And when all of that stuff uh, has been done by the Teams application, it will render this application template and provide that information for me. Uh, in in the context, uh, so we have the context from Teams that contains information about in 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 about the context in which the application is running. So if it is a channel application, you get the channel ID, uh, the the group ID, and stuff like that, and and a lot of things that that is uh, provided you by Teams SDK in the client, and. That is JavaScript but natively, but but uh, with Teams Blazor or Blazor it Teams, uh, it is translated over to to .NET, so you don't have to do any .NET or uh, JavaScript coding, and it also provides you then with the access token that you can use to access Microsoft Graph. Uh, then I'll just switch over to using the or, or away from IIX press and then hit F5 to just try that it actually compiles and, and works. So the first time it takes a bit, bit to compile the entire application. Uh, and here we have it. This is just the standard Blazor application and, and that's fine. But now it's compiled correctly. All right. So then it is time to go to Teams and, and do the actual manifest of, of that application. So here, the App Studio is an application, a Teams application that you can use to easily create manifest for your applications. And I have already one application that I've uh, created here uh, ahead of time. So, but we'll just take a look at that. So the application manifest, it requires a short name of the application, an app ID, package name, version, and descriptions, uh, your company name, website, and the privacy URL and terms of use URL. That is, and then you can specify icons and stuff like that. But the, this is what, what is required to have in the application. What we'll do is that we have a tab that we want to have in this application. So we go to the tab section and uh, in a team tab, here's where you would add tabs that you install in, into channels or, or uh, meetings or group chats. But since we're, we're doing just a personal tab, we use this personal tab section. So here you can add a new personal tab. Uh, I already created one, so we'll just have a look at that, how it looks. So the name of that, and then uh, uh, a unique identifier for that tab, I'll just use the same. Here's the URL that of the page that we just created in Visual Studio. Uh, and so when, when you launch the application, it will load that URL. And that's pretty much it, what, what you need to, to have in, in the application. 
you can have a look at the app manifest. It looks like this. And then on the last page here, you can either download it or, or install it directly if you have enabled what they call side loading of, of Teams apps in, in your tenant. So you need to uh, enable custom applications in, in your tenant, but you can do that probably in, in a development tenant. No problem with that. Otherwise, you need to uh, download the, the manifest and, and ask an, an admin to, to publish it for you. But what we'll do now is just go ahead and install that, add it, and it will come here as, a, as an icon. And now when it runs, it will not run because I haven't started the application in Visual Studio, but now again, run it. And when it's loaded, we can go back to the Teams client, which is over here, I guess. Yes. And now when I refresh that, it will load. And here is the information that is coming from Teams context and all of the authentication results with my access tokens and a list of scopes that is included and so on. Great, great. Yeah. So, so then people can just use the access token and start calling other APIs using Graph yes. or calling into SharePoint and so on. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Really cool, and I really like how, it, how you kind of made it easy to uh, handle the, the Teams SDK and, and kind of do all the, 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 the plumbing essentially, making it super yeah. simple for folks to use this. So thanks, Mika. Great demo. Yeah. I love it. No problem.